In this video, I'm sharing my top five Lightroom tips and tricks for beginners. Let's hop right into it. My first tip is don't be afraid of auto settings. Embrace auto and embrace letting Lightroom do a little bit of work for you. And the tip behind this is you can actually hold the shift key, double click a slider, and Lightroom will automatically adjust that individual slider. Let's try that again with shadows. We'll hold shift, double click our shadows, and Adobe Lightroom will automatically adjust our shadows. A time when I like to use this is if I feel stuck editing and I'm not really sure where I want this slider, I will shift, double click, kind of let Lightroom decide and then make my tweaks from there. Usually Lightroom's automatic settings are a good starting place. Even if you want to hit this auto button up here, don't be afraid of auto. Now, in this case, it is a little bit too flat. I'm going to hit command Z to undo those settings, but auto is a great place to start. So again, shift, double click, and we'll let Lightroom decide what that value is. It may or may not be what you want, but it's usually a good starting place. Let's go ahead and reset our white slider. My second tip is to utilize your histogram and especially your clipping warnings here up in the upper right of your histogram and the upper left of your histogram. This will show you where your shadows are clipping. If I go ahead and I click that, we don't necessarily see anything in this image because our shadows are currently not clipping. I have that turned on. Let's turn our exposure down. And now you can see where we have fully lost detail and our shadows are clipping in the portions that are blue. I'm gonna hit Command Z. I'll turn off our shadow clipping. Let's turn on our highlight clipping. And just by scrolling over it, even before I turn it on, you can see these red blobs here. And that tells me that these portions of my image are clipping. And this tells me that these details within these highlights will be unrecoverable when I export this image as a JPEG. And in this particular case with neon lights, you're actually seeing the lights, you're seeing flares from the lights. I am okay with that clipping. But a time where this may be important is if you have an overexposed image and you start to lose a lot of detail in here. I really don't want to lose this detail in the face. I would never take that image that far, but that's just an example where your highlights or your whites would be clipping. And that's why this tool is extremely important, especially if you're working on multiple devices or if you're one of those people that likes to work with your brightness on your monitor all the way up or all the way down. This will allow you to see where your highlights and your shadows are actually at. In addition to paying attention to your histogram, always pay attention to your histogram. Now, tip three is extremely important. It's going to save you a ton of time and that is copy and pasting settings and syncing settings between different photographs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit command shift C on a Mac, and that's going to bring up this copy settings dialog box here. And you're going to have a whole bunch of options that you can select and deselect for what you want to copy and paste. Now I want to copy treatment profile, all of my basics here, my tone curve, HSL, all of this looks good. If you don't want to, for instance, copy and paste a horizontal crop to a vertical portrait, maybe I would go ahead and I would uncheck crop. So I'm going to copy. I'll go down. I will find another image that I'd like to paste my settings to. Let's use this horizontal portrait. Command V on the keyboard and boom, pasted my settings. And that's a great starting point. I may want to turn my exposure down, but command shift C to copy and command V to paste. Now let's say I have a hundred images that I want to copy and paste the same settings to. I don't want to do that a hundred times. So I'll take my starting image. Let's say this photo right here. I will go to the final image, shift select, and then hit over here in the lower right sync. I'll select any of the settings that I want to sync or not to sync and then hit synchronize. And now you can see all of these images down here will synchronize with the identical settings to my highlighted image that I first started with. Tip number four is to use black and white to more accurately edit the contrast of your images. So in this example, I'm going to hit the letter V on the keyboard. You can see my image is now black and white. And now that we don't have color as a distraction, 
you can see this image feels a little bit flat. So again, here's the color and hitting V on the keyboard, there's the black and white. So this image again, tonally feels a little bit flat. There is a lot of color contrast between the blues and the skin tones here. But again, that is color contrast and this is tonal contrast. So I'm gonna turn down my black values a little bit. You can see that looks much better. I'll even turn up my white values and my highlights a touch. And I think that looks much better. We actually have some tonal contrast. Our eyes are not being tricked by our color or hue contrast that's happening within the image. It also gives your eyes a little bit of a rest if you've been staring at a whole bunch of hues for a long time. Tip number five is to fine tune your sharpening using masking. Now we have our detail tab here open on the right and you can see this fun little slider that says masking and it looks like nothing is happening, right? If I slide to the left, slide to the right all the way to 100, nothing appears to be happening. So here's a little trick, hold Option or Alt on the keyboard and you can see sliding to the left, sliding to the right, things just turn black and white and kind of funky. Now here's what it's doing. If I slide all the way to the left, my entire image is white and sharpening will be applied to the entire image. If I slide the image all the way to the right, that white is starting to disappear and it's starting to focus around the edges there. And at 100%, it's pretty much black and black means sharpening is not being applied. So what I wanna do, especially if I'm taking images at night, I can adjust where I want the sharpening to take place in the images. Now, right around, I'd say 20 to 30 is pretty good. What we're doing is you can see some areas of noise over here, which I would like to be kind of flat and not sharpened. I'll let those stay black in the areas I do want sharpened, like the hair, the eyes, the details here in the neons. So it's kind of finding that balance of black and white of not sharpening the noisy areas. And you can kind of see the noise as I play around with this. I want the detail sharpened and not the noise and holding Alt or Option on your keyboard and sliding that mask slider is a great way to kind of fine tune that balance of sharpening, find where that noise is at and only keep the detail and only sharpen the details that you wanna keep. So we can really exaggerate that, turn that sharpening way up and you can see where that sharpening is being applied. So we've emphasized the details in our image and the things we want really sharp and to look really good and to pop out. And we have not emphasized the noise, which we kind of want to just fade away here in the background. And I think that looks pretty great. So those are my top five Lightroom tips and tricks for beginners. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for new Lightroom tutorials. And lastly, if you're a beginner struggling with Lightroom, be sure to check out my 30 days of Lightroom tutorial series that will get you on the fast track to editing like a pro in Lightroom. So that's all for this video. Let me know down below in the comments if you want to suggest a video or what your favorite tip was. And until next time, get out and go shoot.